Good morning. You guys want to know what the best sound in the world is? I'll show you. Oh. Ah. Current day, August 3rd. Current time, 6.47 a.m. Got something special planned for you today. I'm giving myself one day to find, fix, repair, list, and sell an outboard motor. Never challenged myself like this. I typically have boats and motors sitting around for a week or two at a time. I order parts, they've got a ship. Typical weekend activities, morning caffeine, scrolling marketplace in search of money-making opportunities. And we might have found one. This is, I think, 1990, Johnson 99 electric start short shaft electric start 99s are like super in demand you know no one wants to be out there yanking on the pull start you also find long shafts a lot easier than you do short shafts so this is like bang 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 two for one like desirable i'm gonna sit my red bull i'm gonna shoot him a message and uh We'll see what happens. If he doesn't answer me or someone else buys it or if he doesn't answer me until way later, then uh, these clips will never see the light of day. And then I'm just a crazy guy out in his garage talking to himself at 6.30 in the morning. But if you are seeing this clip, that means he must have answered me. So let's cut to the motor. Alright y'all, here she is. 1990 Johnson 99. Feels like there's really good compression. First thing I'm gonna do is check and make sure the starter's working okay. Did not hook this motor up to power before I bought it, so we'll see. Remember guys, time is of the essence here. We've only got a day. Alright, moment of truth. Nice. Time to check compression. Spark plugs look fouled, but not too bad for the age. Let's see what we got on top. Ninety-two, all right. Hopefully the bottom gives us something close. Ninety-two point five, dead even. Time to check spark. Top cylinder. Good spark on top, that's gonna be huge. Time for the bottom. Hopefully you guys saw that, but it did have spark indeed. I was really nervous about having spark on both cylinders, guys. Not that it's difficult to restore spark to an engine. However, for a same day challenge like this one, uh, it'd be near impossible for me to find any ignition parts or anything like that lying around. I could drive to the parts store, but their premium is massive. They only sell OEM. They don't have CDI or anything like that. So huge news, great spark, great compression. That is an awesome start for a same day challenge. Nothing really to do except hook gas and water up and see how it runs. Well, we're getting no pops or even the slightest attempt to start. So uh, time to dig in a little deeper. First clue I have as to why this thing isn't running is actually in the cowling. Look at that. This is the foam interior of the cowling. Over time, the foam inside just completely deteriorates. It gets hot from the engine running, it crumbles. It's actually very rare to find engines with this stuff still in it. What happens is it falls out of the cowling and gets everything in the motor. Everything is covered in that crap. So my guess is the carburetor is probably filthy. Let's pop the airbox off and take a look. Oh yeah, all in the airbox too. I'll get to you soon, don't worry. Nine nines should have seven sixteenths. All right, 
that one fuel line. Filthy carburetor. Okay, first look into the bowl. Uh-oh, yeah. That uh, float is toast. Yeah, guys, so uh, back in the day, they made carburetor floats out of cork. And the issue with cork is that it degrades over time quite... Bruh. Yeah, like that. Uh, yeah, so... What I was saying is, the issue with cork is that they degrade over time and they crumble and break off pieces and it clogs your carburetors. Needle looks okay. All right, lucky for us, I've always got the new improved carb float on deck. So, uh, Aren't I working on a motor from 1990? I work on so many outboards and work on so many types of carburetors. I, it literally did not even occur to me until just now. This carburetor is not from 1990. This should not have had a cork float in it. We don't even have this top plate here. This is an old carburetor. Carburetor mystery has been solved. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there is some numbers stamped right here. I looked it up. This is a 15 horsepower carburetor. Uh, if you guys did not know this, 99s and 15s for pretty much every OMC motor share the same block. Uh, the real only difference between a 99 and a 15 horsepower is the carburetor. Tail is old as time. A lot of lakes are 10 horsepower restricted, can only have 10 or under. Uh, there's two main ways people get around this. Either they buy a 15 horsepower and they slap 99 stickers on it. Again, the motors share the same block, so they're the same size. Uh, or uh, the craftier way to get around that and uh, make it less likely to get caught by law enforcement is they will remove the 99 carburetor and replace it with a 15 horsepower carburetor. With that being said, Handy Manny definitely had some more garage pops in this situation. Some cold snacks. Whether or not he did his research on if this old of a carburetor was compatible with this new of a motor, I have no idea. The timing, advanced throttle, everything's syncing up. Uh, it looks like it should work just fine. I mean, carburetors have been doing the same freaking thing for 70 years. They just look different. I feel pretty good that this actually will work okay. Let's clean it out and give it a try. Who knows? And on the bright side, we got 15 horsepower. Don't tell on me. Okay, carburetor's completely installed on the engine. Gonna go ahead and fire this thing up and see if we can get it to pop and see if we can get it to run. We're definitely farther along than we were. So that's great news. I'm gonna go ahead and fiddle with the Lean Ridge adjustment idling needle and uh, see if we can get it to do anything more than that. The very second we started to really get somewhere with this engine, huge storm just rolled in and started dumping rain on me. Looking pretty gnarly out there, not gonna lie. The weather does not look favorable for the rest of the day. Perks of living in the Midwest, the uh, weather can change in two seconds. With that being said, I'm gonna sit here and wait this storm out, but clock's ticking. This is a one day challenge. However, I'm the one that made the challenge. So in my rule book, if a storm comes in and prevents you from working on the engine, I think you're allowed to drag some time into the following day. We'll see, we'll see. I'm not trying to make excuses already, but if it's pouring down rain and I can't get out there with an engine and run it, then <sighs> might have to be a tomorrow morning challenge as well. So we'll see, we'll see. I'll be back with an update. You know, rain really sucks. It makes rust. I'm terrified of rust. You know what rust is terrified of though? 
Bowshield T9. Bowshield was kind enough to send me some products out to try and I've actually got to tell you guys, it's crazy, it's magic. Got a little John boat here and I got rust free, rust and stain remover from Bowshield T9. You just go ahead and give her a little spray. This is just a brush. This isn't a wire brush. This is just soft bristles. Look at that. Bow Shield Rust Free Rust and Stain Remover got this looking right. Bow Shield also makes a really awesome blade and bit resin, gum, and pitch remover for all the pesky gunk on your cutting tools. Bow Shield really gets your stuff looking brand new. Last but most certainly not least, Bow Shield T9 Rust and Corrosion Protection. Anywhere that rusts, give this thing a coat. You saw it guys, products speak for themselves. Click the link in the description to check out Bowshield T9. Thank you Bowshield for sponsoring this video. Definitely proud to stand behind these products. So go check them out, link in the description. All right, we got about a 45 minute break in the weather. Let's see if we can get this engine running good. All right, this engine runs perfectly. It's running really good, fires up immediately, got it tuned in perfect. Uh, might still be idling just a hair low, but it's easy to raise up. This engine's a nine out of 10, guys. It's just not pumping water, so we might need an impeller on this thing. I'm not sure if you guys can see on camera, but the telltale is completely clogged with dirt or mud or something. Mud daubers, bugs, uh, build nests in there, clog the telltale up. Usually it's as easy as taking some thin wire and poking it free and you should have a good healthy water stream again. Let's see. So I just fired it up. That didn't quite do the trick. So I pulled the actual water hose off that goes from the block out to the telltale. And this is actually completely clogged. I have no idea what's in here but it's clogged, it's old anyways. I'm gonna go grab a new one from the hardware store. In the process of doing this, I snapped the little black telltale nipple off. It's like $2 to get a new one. It's also really common to not see those at all and people just run the hose through the hole at the bottom. So that's just what I'm gonna do. Be back in a second with a new water hose and then let's see a nice water stream. Got our new water hose put on and connected free of all obstruction. Let's fire this thing up. Right there is what you call a smooth perfect running outboard all right the only thing left to do is clean this thing up give it a quick service and we will be ready to list it for sale I forgot to tell you guys I already put new spark plugs in it earlier we got fresh plugs fresh gear oil now we just got to give this thing a good bath get it cleaned up and then she'll be ready to list and sell It's 7.30 in the evening here. Does not give me a lot of time to list this thing and sell it. I am gonna use the storm as an excuse. Uh, it put me out for multiple hours. It was storming real bad out here. Didn't really wanna get struck by lightning in the name of a YouTube challenge. So hopefully I can get this thing sold tonight. If not, fully confident it'll be gone by tomorrow. Either way, you guys are gonna find out how much I sold it for and how much I profited in like 10 seconds. So here we go. All right guys, we did not sell it the same day or the day after, unfortunately. Took a few days. Uh, for any of you guys that maybe follow the stock market, um, the entire global stock market crashed horribly over the weekend. Uh, the last thing people wanna do when there's you know big financial fears is spend money on boat motors and non-necessities. We didn't quite get as much out of it as we wanted and it took a little longer to sell, but we did sell it for $550. Still made a great profit on it. Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna take that profit and go buy some more.